Also, uh, let's uh, drill down on uh, the monetary policy the considerations and decisions, the final one for 2019, uh, those uh, presentations by the uh, governor of the central bank, Godwin Emefile, yesterday. Let's uh, uh, bring in uh, Paul Alaje, who is a senior economist at SPM Professionals uh, from Abuja Studios, uh, into the conversations uh, this morning, get some insights and perspectives into this. Good morning, uh, Paul. Welcome to the program. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Great to have you. Thank you so much. So give me your first word. Uh, put the entire nine-page presentation by the governor into uh, what you call the summary. Yeah. Um, well, I, I would say that uh, MPC have taken decision I would have taken if we were part of the committee, uh, because at, at the moment, this is the best time to sit on the fence. It's the best time to do nothing, not to adjust the figures. And the reasons are very close to us. 11.2% inflation rate increased uh, for last month to 11.6%. Border closure, government is saying it has no impact. The people around the border, and indeed the people, some people among Nigerians are saying it does have impact on the prices of rice, among other commodities. Apart from that, we have seen what National Bureau of Statistics released regarding finance sector. If you are just raised, it's going to cost a major difference in the financial sector. Particularly, it might have influence on Nigerian stocks and beyond the stock market. It might have definitely, it would definitely have uh, implication on, uh, among the banks that we have in the country today. We know what already is going on among the lenders. We also know that if you reduce interest rate, it may mean that lenders will lend more uh, to the people. And if that, is, if that happens, it may, there are tendencies that it will induce inflation. If you say, on the other hand, that we want to increase NPR, uh, that may make lending become a bit more difficult. Given, again, that we are going towards the end of the year, where you have December, a lot of purchase activities will happen. People want to spend uh, um, money on uh, consumable goods. Would that be the best time to increase or to reduce? I, I think the best thing is what uh, the CBN governor and his team have done by what, sitting on the fence to, and take a no action in, in order for us to see how the year wraps us. And maybe next year, if we have new parameters, then they can, uh, they can also take uh, some new decisions. And if you also look at what uh, the GDP figures release shows that the economy have grown uh, from what it was now to about uh, over 2%, I think 2.28%. For me, I think the decision taken by MPC is the decision I would have taken, considering all factors from finance sector or also to what GDP figure is saying, the recent increase in inflation, and also government decision regarding what is happening to um, border closure. I, I know a lot of Nigerians will say, but the rate needs to be low. We need more liquidity in the economy. We need more money and so on and so forth, might be the question. What people, know, people need to know is that there is difference between monetary authority and fiscal authority. For me, I think it's the time for fiscal authority to do more in terms of government expenditure. And we are hoping that National Assembly has promised, Mr. President, and indeed the entire Nigerian, that a 2020 budget will be passed in December and that when President Buhari is addressing Nigeria on his goodwill message for the new year, that the summary of 2020 budget will be inclusive. I am hopeful, I am hopeful uh, that uh, this promise by the Senate leadership and the National Assembly at large will be kept. And the, the President will also mention this figure so that Nigeria can revert back to January to December uh, budgetary year. Uh, Paul, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so if you look at this nine-page presentation by the central bank chief yesterday, uh, dwelt a little bit on those uh, considerations, uh, the, the decisions of the Monetary Policy Committee, but it looks more like the scorecard of the central bank uh, over, uh, for over this year and over the last three years when the central bank governor spoke about uh, private sector credit, those interventions into agriculture and a few other sectors, and it reeled out quite a lot of numbers. Uh, and of course, one of what you see this morning being reported widely in the media is that the private sector credit overtook government's uh, credit to the government, uh, and, and that was quite 1.167 uh, a, a a trillion naira. That sounds like uh, a sunbite. So uh, if you put this together, what does that tell you about the unorthodox uh, monetary policy uh, agenda a focus of the central bank over the last one, two, three, I roll it all the way back into 2015, 2016 recession period. 
Uh, for me, it, it's coming as good news because when you look at the simple uh, line, uh, say, formula for national income, you say income equals to private consumption and you had private investment to that, you had government expenditure to that, that is when you find the difference with what uh, uh, ta taxation is talking about, then you find the difference between import and export. It is simple elementary economics that you find. The good news here is that investment, once it grows, even if it's lending to private sector, it will surely have implication of what gross domestic product is doing. And perhaps this is why Nigeria have had, uh, we are no longer in the one percent region of growth that we have seen in 2016 and two somewhat 2017, because lending is now going directly to private, uh, to private sector and private sector could invest directly. Of course, we need more. That does not mean that we have done sufficiently well in terms of what should go to private sector. But for me, I think kudos, I'll give kudos to Central Bank uh, and also the entire committee that's uh, talking about monetary policy committee in terms of the lending and more money that is going to pri private sector. We need more of this. Uh, before now, we, we noticed that public sector actually get more credit than private sector, which means public sector, in fact, is larger than the entire private sector. But when you look at uh, the components of the economy, over 400 uh, billion US dollars that Nigeria has, I think it's about 370, over 370 billion US dollars now from the figure that we have, I think, sometimes in 2018. Uh, you, you notice that the component of public sector is really very small compared to what the entire private sector and the contribution also to the GDP, majorly SME services and so on and so forth, once it's known uh, among the non-oil sector. But for government to be seeing a lot of money, state government in this regard, because when we say government, is state government in this regard, getting and uh, getting meaningful part of debt profile and also federal government uh, foreign debt. So if I give you, if private sector is are now having more money, good news for Nigeria is private sector once they get more money, gone are the days where they get the money and marry two, three, four, five wives. Chances are that when private sector gets more money, more jobs will be created. So we might just be waiting to see what the figures will be from National Bureau of Statistics regarding what has happened to job market. I am hopeful that even though the job market, um, we have been seeing some level of scarcity in that market, we might just begin to have some reversal. By what percentage? I may not say, but the, even if it's going to increase, I don't see the increase going further than the number we have had right now. So the private sector uh, credit expansion, uh, uh, tying that into the non-performing uh, loan book of banks that is declining now to single digit from about 14.05% at the end of October last year. Uh, so the central bank uh, governor went to speak about what he called uh, uh, reforms, which he, the, 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 the communicator says is an adequate shock absorber for both external and internal headwinds. Do you think we have adequate shock absorber, as it were, at the moment? Uh, well, you want to compare Nigeria with other economies in the world, the answer will be no. But when you want to compare Nigeria within the realities of Nigeria, the answer will be yes. When you compare Nigeria with countries like India, China, and you compare Nigeria with countries like Indonesia, the answer will be capital no, because we don't have what it takes. We don't even have up to 20% of the vote uh, China has uh, for, for a reserve compared to what Nigeria has. So the answer will be no. When you also divide what we have in a foreign reserve, and we, what we even have in our national savings per population is nothing to write home about when compared with those three countries I've mentioned. But when you compare Nigeria with where we were in 2016 and where we are today, you see considerable and appreciable improvement in our monetary policy. Now, monetary policy is not the goal in itself. It's the outcome that comes thereafter that matters. And you're beginning to see that the uh, non-performing loan from banks are beginning to drop from 14% to neighborhood of one, one digit now, which is the good news, which is even the target of central bank in, in single digit for non-performing loan and more and more facilities going to private sector which can be questioned where you have Amcon, where you, you also have secondary market unlike what you have before and you see this is not just happening because there is uh, there is a bill that was just ascended so i think we had the conversation on this platform where uh, we discuss what happens to those who have borrowed money and in court is becoming bad what we government do new bill was presented i think at the floor of national assembly i'm not sure if president have sent it to it or not which means if you 
you don't pay, they will have to trace other things that belongs to you or the organization in order for people to pay back. So but, uh, borrowers will become more responsible and become responsive in paying for what they uh, might have borrowed, either from uh, the deposit money banks or from other sources, as long as it affects our economic life. So for me, once again, I think economy is now beginning to have some level of performance that we can uh, lay hold to. What we, there are other areas, though, that we may need to look at what is happening to, to stock exchange because it's also one of the parameters of measuring the performance of an economy. Finance sector also, I hope that we're going to see better figure uh, be, because of what we are now seeing men being mentioned by MPC when Nigeria Bureau of Statistics releasing a new report. We hope that it will reflect in the overall performance of that sector or like what we have seen in the last three to four quarters in terms of performance for the finance market, finance sector. Well, but you see, the MPC never missed the opportunity to uh, request, as it were, and I'm trying to put it that, or ask the federal government to do a couple of things when you have uh, NPC. So yesterday, there's another opportunity for the NPC to, uh, to use that uh, occasion to talk about uh, what the central bank governor referred as the strong visibility of fiscal and structural policies. Says the government should make sure there's a strong visibility of fiscal and structural policies. The government was asked to uh, drill down on investment, uh, making Nigeria an attractive investment destination, in particular for FDIs. You know, they also asked the government to reconsider uh, the budget, uh, all by all price benchmark of $57 for 2020. Uh, this is all putting some of the workload uh, to the executive branch. Yeah, you, you observed recently that the, I think the latest figure released, and I think mentioned on several channels, has been that uh, FDI, particularly in real sector, uh, reduced by about 7% or more uh, in the very recent time. It caused for a lot of alarm. And I've said that leaders of countries don't need to go to investors around the world and telling them that they should come and invest in their countries. They have highs to see. Our biggest market in the country today is Lagos. When it comes to investing big beyond portfolio investment. And even if you do portfolio investment, I guess the location today is still largely Lagos and maybe Abuja. Uh, but why, what do you have in Lagos? What do we have in recent time? Social media will tell us that when people talk about Lagos, chances are that they talk about traffic, which wastes man hour. We need to do something beyond Lagos State. As a country, if you must attract more investment, such as we have all around the world, countries with largest population, starting with China, largest population, they've paid attention to their special cities and special uh, uh, provi providences where they know investment goes to directly. Government, central government, Government of such country have not left decisions in the hand of regional government or if you like state government in the case of Nigeria to provide those infrastructure. The truth is that if you don't take pay attention to the states that will receive investment as they come and in most investment that come to Nigeria more than 30 to 40 percent of such investment we go to only five cities that we have in the country today. So if we don't pay attention and realize that the man that works in Lagos or that works in Kaduna or that works in Port Harcourt or that works in Abuja. We come from Calabar, we come from Sokoto, we come from Kano. And in those places, nobody cares where you come from. If you don't make those investment areas attractive enough, uh, I'm afraid we might be talking about having less and less investment. And so, the only thing we can do to do this is going to be structural changes. It's going to be structural transformation of some sort. Not as you heard in the 90s. And it's not talking about devaluation of our currency. I need to pull that straight. That is not what I mean. But we need to look at those things that we need to adjust. If we require legislation of government, talking about National Assembly, there seems to be parley between executive and legislature this time. Is we have window of opportunity to make this happen. So that our countries, if we need to get countries, and we need to get investors, in fact countries that want to invest directly on light rail in our major cities, which will be a lot of investment, job created, new economy, new market, new business, crashing unemployment rate from what it is now to more than 30% of the unemployment figures we have now creating entirely different economy in our, in our country. I would suggest that government look at how to partner with these states, particularly the state with huge population, uh, huge so, number, so Paul, and huge business. Paul, a quick we can one. do the same for Port Harcourt and the toy business and refinery and see how uh, we can make, a, a quick uh, one. make it from that regard. 
Yes, a quick one. On Monday this week, the World Bank and the Pebec Office, that's the Presidential Enabling Business Council, Jumako Duwale, uh, were together at the World Bank and Nigeria's office uh, for a stakeholders meeting on how to catalyze private sector, private investment into subnationals or state governments. Do you see this as uh, a door opening or a cut raiser uh, on the side of the government, getting the World Bank to begin to sit together to see how to help the state government because the big brother himself is not feeling so big at the moment. That is, the federal government is asking states to pay back the bailout. We don't have the latest on that yet. The state says they don't want the money. They want a net off with the federal government. The federal government is saying, no, if you do any road construction for me, I'm not going to pay you. So, do you think we're beginning to see the government not just behaving like a godfather, the godfather here, but trying to help the state governments to learn how to fish? So, are you encouraged when you see some state governments across uh, southwest the north talking about economic and investment, whatever? Are you encouraged by some of this? And do you think we're beginning to change the game? We're beginning to make a turn? Maybe not 360 yet, maybe around 90 degree. I don't know. What degree do you think? I, I'm, I'm encouraged, but I hope that it will go beyond rhetorics. We've seen meetings, conferences, going to UN, going to IMF, and so on and so forth. In fact, in recent time, going to China. I, I've seen that over and over again. But the kind of investment I think that we should have to what we are doing right now, because it's a good move on behalf of, I mean, that subnationals and the representative of government have started doing, uh, beyond that, I think we know this investor. When it comes to power, we know top three names in the world that would have invested, not privatization, that will be sold at some power companies or the national asset is sold to some people who we perceive as friends of government. No, that's not what I'm talking about. When it comes to performance, it knows nobody, it has no friends. If you are not operating at peak performance, it will tell, it will show, and it will hurt us. So if we talk about uh, those who will help us get uh, some level of investment uh, into, say, so, I mean, into states, gov I mean, states in Nigeria, it's not going to be doing it as usual, allocating it to people that we know because they are friends with government or the parties within those subnational. It's going to be those who can perform, who can employ people. And the truth is, I think subnational have not been strategic enough. Many of them just want Apple to fall on their laps. They need to take their legs to where Apple's are. And in doing this, I will want them to look at comparative advantage of every cost advantage and be strategic to that effect. For instance, I take Benue State uh, as an example. It is commonly called the food basket of the nation. I've done research in Benue State and I've seen for myself, not I was told, a lot of fruit that were wasted. A number of farmers who had, who maybe because they don't have capacity, they cannot sell up or they have more harvest that they can sell. What stop um, fruit companies, those who will package fruits, items, and so on and so forth, to go to that environment? Certainly it will cost state government some money. What you see is state government is borrowing more money in in order to pay salary and then trying to embark on some projects. And when you look at debt profile and revenue to be collected by, by the state government, it calls for a loss to worry. But the situation is not totally bad because I can see from the book that state government is having new energy to see how to improve. But beyond all of this improvement, it's not going to come from I mean, public sector investment or government investment in the state. What government should do is to parley, guarantee land, guarantee power supply, even though it's going to be meaningful proportion of power that goes to State for those sectors to work because you are going to collect those money back in taxes. And companies that have stayed with you, it will be very difficult for them not to operate within your state in the coming period. Paul Alaji, Chief Economist at SPM Professionals, thank you very much for your time this morning for drilling down on the final MPC decisions in 2019. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you on the show uh, in the future. Let's take a break, everyone. So then we'll take you all the way to the financial markets. What's the first trading day looking like?